Hi everyone, welcome to Transformation Tuesday Bible Study. Today we're going to be talking about kingdom unity. You know, all this warfare that's going on, all this stuff that's going on, a lot of it was engineered, of course, by agents of the enemy himself. And the only way that we can fight it as the body of Christ is if we unify. So I'm going to talk about what unity is and who we are in Christ and how we're supposed to always walk in the spirit, how we need to avoid sins like racism, elitism, extreme nationalism, extreme patriotism, and also how we have to bear each other's burdens and be generous towards each other. And of course, walking in kingdom unity. So please stay tuned, everybody. Have your Bibles out. We will be using the New King James Version, but you can use any version that you have. Of course, any acceptable version. Or you can watch along with us on the screen as we go through the scriptures, because all the scriptures will be available on the screen. Thank you for joining us. I really hope that you enjoy this one. So what is unity? Unity means that we have the same purpose, the same goals, and the same morals for the most part. It doesn't mean that we look the same or that we're from the same countries. It's not about that. We can be diverse yet be united. And as Christians, as you know, children of the Most High God, we are united in the goal of bringing people into the body of Christ and spreading the gospel. So we must unite and fight spiritually, of course, in the spirit, we must unite in faith and in the spirit to fight against anything that impedes that. And right now, what's impeding that is a lot of things. There's a lot of evilness that is impeding us from doing that um, effectively. Of course, it's causing divisions even within the body of Christ. So we have to unite right now in order to fight against that in prayer. Remember, wherever two or more are gathered, God is there. So imagine if we're all united in prayer, what that can do. That's the whole point of this presentation and that's the whole point of unity. So everybody open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter three, verses 26 through 29. That's Galatians chapter three, verses 26 through 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So everybody, let's continue on to Galatians chapter four, verses one through six. That's Galatians chapter four, verses one through six. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So everyone, let's continue on in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. That's Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revel revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, and being one another. So everyone, open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So it's very important to acknowledge and embrace our identity in Christ. We have to know whose we are and who we are in Christ. We were all born, we were born again Christian. We're all children of the Most High God. Whether we are black, white, it doesn't matter. And so we have to unite in that. And also, uniting also means separating ourselves from people who don't have that same identity. I'm not saying be rude to them or be mean to them. No, that is also against the word of God. But we cannot be friendly with those types of people. We have to also, you know, if we are going to be around them, we have to evangelize. Share the word of God, share the gospel, and try to bring them to Christ. But the more you hang out with them, the more you absorb their sins. The more you take on their demons or whatever spirits that they have going on that you may not even know about. And also what that does is also decreases the Holy Spirit in you. Because the Holy Spirit is holy, doesn't like sin. So you have to avoid them so that you could also avoid picking up sins that you maybe were delivered from, that you that you've been, you know, that you've repented of. So you have to avoid them as well. And of course, avoid all sin and live repentant lifestyles. That is who we are in Christ. And the more we do that. When we meet other members of the of the body of Christ, we can talk more about, you know, different issues and how to pray against this and how to pray against certain principalities and, and evil spirits because we're united in who we are in Christ. We're not hateful. We're not talking about, you know, oh, I like this or I don't like that or, or I don't like that TV show. No, we're united in that goal of, you know, praying against all the evil that's going on and bringing more people into the body of Christ. That's the whole purpose. So everyone, open up your Bibles again to Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. That's Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now everyone, open up your Bibles to James chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. That's James chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme the noble name by which you are called? 
if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law of transgressors. So everybody, let's turn to Philippians chapter two, verses one through four. That's Philippians chapter two, verses one through four. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Now everyone, turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, but the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together rose into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So of course I think you all know this as Christians we should have no part in racism, elitism, classism, none of that because what that does is we actually end up oppressing each other and also oppressing ourselves. You know with racism also becomes narcissism and other prideful things. And then of course, when you're fighting against racism in the flesh as well, you become oppressed, you become tired, you become depressed, your self-esteem goes down. So we have to fight these things in a different way and all the things that are going on that are being brought by the enemy himself. I mean, the whole thing, we went over this before, the whole uh, BLM movement was brought on by a Luciferian himself. You You see what I'm saying? So these type of things are brought on by the enemy and his agents. And so we have to know that as a unit and come together as a unit and, you know, pray against the real enemy that's bringing all this forth, that's bringing all this forth and that's also bringing it to you. So if you're going through any of these things, if you're, you know, if you feel like you have some racism in you, if you feel like you're also, you know, have a high nationalism or high black nationalism in you, or, you know, that you're way too into your culture to the point where you've almost made it an idol, any one of those things an idol, whether, you know, you, you have pride in who you are, and it's too much pride, of course, because pride comes before the fall. And at this time, with all the pride that people have and all the nationalism and elitism, it brings also the body of Christ down and removes the focus, removes the focus completely. And so if we're not focused and we're not working as a unit, how are we going to pray against these things? How are we going to pray on one accord? We're not going to. And that's why these enemies are prevailing because we are falling victim to all of their schemes, you know, whether we should have church open or not whether we should it's it's ridiculous and it's all because we are so divided as a unit and so one of the biggest things that we need to obviously stay away from is nationalism as well as elitism and of course racism these are all things that individually you need to look into yourself and figure out okay are these things that are are these things that i'm really you know suffering from ask god to deliver you from it and he'll do it he will do it you know, because none of it is beneficial to the body of Christ. It's not beneficial to the people out there too who see us as so-called ambassadors of Christ. Why would they want to become part of the kingdom if they see us at each other's throats, if they see that there's no peace within us, if they see that, you know, me being black and a white, another white Christian, we can't get along, we can't talk to each other. They're not going to want to be a part of that. Because it's the same thing. That's another reason why God told us not to be part of this world. We have to be different, you know? So it's not white power, it's not black power, it's not rich power, or whatever you wanna call it. It's not this tribe's power. It is what we call kingdom power. And God made us diverse for a reason. So there's no room for it. And and it, the more that we, you know, have this division, the more that the enemy is winning. And we cannot have that kind of mentality towards each other. We have to move past that. We really, really do. 
So everybody, open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. That's Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. Let's continue on in Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. That's Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So basically what these scriptures are showing us is that we have to bear each other's burdens and also do good to towards each other. So bearing each other's burdens means like if somebody has a sin, a particular sin, I'm going to pray for them so that they can come out of that sin or I'm going to help them in certain ways, you know, to help them get out of that sin. But I also have to know my own breaking point, especially if that's a sin that I've been through myself that I've already been delivered from. So I have to know when to stop to send them over to somebody else who has that particular gifting and deliverance to deliver them from that and help them with that as opposed to me doing that. So that's a way of bearing somebody else's burdens. Then another thing that we have to do as a kingdom of God, you know, to really be cohesive and be a unit is to help each other out when we're in need. So like if somebody is in financial need, you could buy them groceries, help them financially, what, big or small, it doesn't matter. Because think about it, if that person has to spend all their time worrying about their daily bread or where the food is going to come from, and I know that yes, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, but if they're worrying about that, then think about how depressed they might be. Think about how their prayer life might be. And so that little bit that you can help them with, and even to be a listening ear or even praying for them can help them tremendously. So we have to be building each other up. The stronger that we are as a unit, the more that we can, the more powerful our prayers can be against all the evil that's out there. Because it's also the evil that brought that person that poverty for whatever reason. It's, all the, it's also the evilness that's going on in the world, the mass unemployment in the United States of America because of what's going on that led to that person's unemployment. So whatever you can do to help them, maybe find an employment, maybe look, maybe you can be that employer for them for whatever it is that's helping them. Maybe you can pray for them. You know, God can find a way out of no way. He can find it even in <laughs> this climate. He can help that person find a job. So that's another way that you can help each other out and build each other up as a body of Christ. And we that's also how we build up our spirit. And that's how you build up the Holy Spirit in you by doing good works for people, especially members of, especially the brethren. God sees that he's everywhere. He's looking at everything that you're doing. That builds up the power of the Holy Spirit within you. You know, and you definitely don't want to, at this time, of course, sow into the flesh. You want to sow into people, you know, or sow into, you know, sow the word into people, you know, and teach people what you've learned from the word of God rather than sowing into your flesh. You don't want to do that because whatever you sow, you shall reap and you'll reap the consequences if you do so into the flesh because sin can ruin you to ruin everything that you have, ruin what you've got. And right now is definitely not the time to be getting involved in any of that. So again, for the body of Christ, you know, as a kingdom of God, we have to once again, bear each other's burdens and of course, do good to each other and be there for each other and build each other up, you know? United, we, we have to be united. It is so important right now. It is 
I mean, it's always important to be united as the kingdom of God, but with everything that's going on, we have to be united and be there for each other when in need, the best that we can. And of course, help each other overcome sins the best that we can. So everybody, open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is only one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So as Christians, we are called to walk in unity. Especially, That's basically what these scriptures are telling us. That's what we're called to do. We have to work on, of course, ourselves and any sins that we're trying to overcome and any deliverance that we're still trying, any sins that we're still trying to be delivered from and live repentant lifestyles. But we have to also embrace unity and help each other and be there for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Bear each other's burdens. Be there for them when they're going through financial loss or any kind of emotional loss as well. Because if we build each other up as a body of Christ, the stronger we are, the more powerful our prayers will be and the more power the Holy Spirit that we'll have that unites us. You know, we're one body. We all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we're believers, of course. And we all have that one God, the Father. You know, so we're all united in that, whether we're black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. So we have to focus on what unites us, especially if we're in a spiritual battle right now, which we all are pretty much in. The whole United States is in a major spiritual battle. And the more divided we are, the more he is winning. Because we're not focused on the right things at all. We're not focused on, you know, coming together and praying against that. Whether that's on Zoom, whether that's over the phone, it doesn't have to be in person to embrace that unity. So that's really what we should focus on. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And, you know... If you have any questions, feel free to reach us on Instagram, email. I want you all to have a wonderful and blessed week.